used to see him every day walking down the beach. An old man with his memories, no friends or family. They say he'd been a soldier and a hero from the war. A solitary man who lived alone, and on the day he died, his medals were by his side, and a letter in his hand that said. Hello and welcome to this combined Remembrance and Communion Reflection. On Wednesday the 11th of November it will be Remembrance Day. At 11 o'clock on that day it will be the anniversary of the end of the First World War. When the armistice was signed on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. That great war which lasted from 1914 to 1918 now seems a very, very long time ago, especially when there have been so many wars since then. However, the First World War changed modern warfare. For many people it defined the horror that would come out of the 20th century. It was the first mechanised war with machine guns which could fire hundreds of rounds of ammunition per minute. It was also where tanks and aircraft were used for the first time. It was death on an industrial scale. One million men were killed and over two million were injured during the First World War. When the war was over, many felt that their sacrifice should never be forgotten. On the 11th of November 1919, on the first anniversary of their armistice, a service of remembrance was held. Since then, remembrance services are held annually around the world commemorating British and Commonwealth servicemen and women who died in the two world wars and in later conflicts. The poppy was adopted in 1921 by the Royal British Legion as the symbol of remembrance. People had begun to wear a poppy after being inspired by the poem of a Canadian doctor, John McCrae, who had been present in France at the fighting. I will read to you now the very, very poignant poem in Flanders Fields. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly, scase heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days go, we lived, felt dawn and saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow, in Flanders fields. Two key things which happen on our remembrance ceremony, which is on the Sunday nearest to the 11th of November. This year it being on the 8th today. These are the reading of the exhortation and then a two minute silence. The exhortation is part of a poem called For the Fallen, written by an English poet called Lawrence Binion in 1914. During the two minute silence, we stay silent to think about people we know or have heard about or have had their lives affected by conflict. My own father was in the RAF stationed in Egypt during World War II and my mother worked on the Jellicoe trains which were regular direct trains from London Euston to Thurso transporting Navy personnel and prisoners of war where they were then taken on to Scapa Flow in Orkney. We can also think about people who are sadly fighting in wars today and how hard that must be for them and their families. Let us now take two minutes of silence to reflect and remember.
they shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Now a prayer, a remembrance prayer from Marcus Corna or Locum. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, we are saddened by the thought of war, of the soldiers who must fight, and all those people who are killed. Today we remember their sacrifice with great sadness. We thank them for what they did for us. We also remember that they won for us a victory that without their bravery, these wars may have been lost, and our lives could have been so very different without the freedom we so much enjoy. We thank them for what they did for us. We are saddened at the thought of your suffering, that you too had to be a great hero and walk to Jerusalem, be arrested, tried and killed on that horrible cross. We thank you for what you did for us. We also remember that you won for us a victory on that Easter morning you rose again and helped us to overcome our human nature so that we might rise again with you. We thank you for what you did for us. Amen. On this Remembrance Sunday Reflection, we are for the very first time holding a communion service to enable all our church community, wherever they are, and also visitors to partake in this most holy of ceremonies of the church. But before we partake of communion, let's just have a look and see what Lucy's up to this month. Lucy is at her school band practice. They are practicing for a special performance they are doing for Christmas. Oh, I think I hear her coming now. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Lucy. How did the school band practice go tonight? At first it was awful, but then it got a whole lot better. Why was that? Well, everyone just did their own thing. It was a right old racket. It wasn't music at all. Doesn't sound good. No, it didn't sound good at all. It sounded like a group had got together and banged everything against the walls and the floor. I'm glad I wasn't there. As if I was, was I would have had to turn my hearing aid down. Some were coming in too soon or not at all. It was chaos. Didn't the conductor do anything about it? No, he was running late, so we began practicing on our own. Didn't anyone take charge? No one could, as no one listened to anyone. Maybe I should have gone after all. I would have made them listen. I'm sure you would. So, what brought the chaos into order then, Lucy? Well, there was this mighty clash of the cymbals and everyone stopped what they were doing and looked round. And what did they see? The conductor was standing there and he wasn't happy. But he soon got everyone into shape. Oh yes, everyone settled down very quickly. Good. He told us that to make music, 
there were two very important things that we all needed to do. What were those two things? One was that there needed to be good, clear communication between each other. What was the other one, Lucy? That we needed to work together rather than working against each other. Very good advice. So what happened next? He told everyone to listen to him and he would show each one what to do and when to play. So he began. And did he communicate with words or with his baton? He was really good as he used his baton. He pointed to the woodwind section and they started to play. Then over to the string instruments. Soon everyone was playing their bit at the right time. And how did it sound now? It was wicked and in harmony. Just as it should be. We had much more fun playing. Great. See how much better it is when there is good communication and when people work together. Yes, I can see that now. You know, Lucy, it's a lot like how Jesus wants us to live. We often mess things up or try to do our own thing. But Jesus comes to help us. How can he help? Jesus, like the conductor, knows what the whole concert should sound like and he communicates to each one what part to play. Cool. So instead of just focusing only on what we do, Jesus helps us to see the needs of the community around us. He shows us ways we can work together to show his love to all people. So cool. Let me put it another way for you. Okay. If you look at a jigsaw, you have one big picture, but it is made up of many little pieces. Yes. We are like pieces of a gigantic jigsaw puzzle, but a puzzle of the universe. God has made each one different, but each one of us is important and has a role to play. Even me? Yes, even you, Lucy, and all the other children. Without each person, the jigsaw is incomplete. Okay. God wants us to know how to communicate with each other and how to work together. God wants us not to focus on ourselves and do our own thing. Got it. Great. Now I'm really looking forward to your concert at Christmas. Thank you, Lyle and Lucy. Now some parish news. With the tightening up of restrictions, we are yet again hindered in moving the process forward with a vacancy. Hopefully, we may be able to do something when the five-tier system of rules become a bit more clearer. I have, during the period before the recent change in lockdown rules, filmed all of our four parish churches inside and out and interviewed people at each location to give a background to each church, its history and its congregational life. Along with the scenery from the parish, this will be made into a short film and broadcast on the Pentland Parish YouTube channel. I hopefully will have it ready before Christmas. And talking about Christmas, we are planning something special for Christmas, assuming we cannot open up our churches, but more about that in due course. I invite you now to join with the Reverend Lyle Rennie with your bread, wine or juice and take part in this communion act of worship filmed in the Pentland Parish Hall in Canisby. During the month of November, we normally hold our Remembrance Sunday services and parades to remember and give thanks 
for those who gave their lives in war. But we must also remember Christ in the way he taught us to remember him, the Lord's Supper. He knew our human frailty, and so he instituted the Lord's Supper so that we would remember him. This we do today in our communion service. So let us come together now in communion with Christ. Lord Jesus, gather us in, the lost and the lonely, the broken and breaking, the tired and the aching, who long for the nourishment found at your feast. Gather us in, the done and the doubting, the wishing and wondering, the puzzled and pondering, who long for the company found at your feast. Gather us in, the proud and pretentious, the sure and superior, the never inferior, who long for the levelling found at your feast. Gather us in, the bright and the bustling, the stirrers and shakers, the kind laughter makers, who long for the deeper joys found in your feast. Gather us in, from corner or limelight, from mansion or campsite, from fears and obsession, from tears and depression, from untold excesses, from treasured successes, to meet, to eat. Be joined to the vine, be offered new wine. Become like the least, be found at the feast. Gather us in. We meet in the name of God, creator of the universe, source of true humanity, mother and father of us all. We meet in the name of Jesus, word made flesh, saviour of fallen humanity, lover of all. We meet in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, midwife of all humanity, inspirer of all. Come then, eternal God, be present with us, befriend us, renew us. What we do here, we, we do an imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and command, rooted in the experience he shared with his disciples in the upstairs room in Jerusalem. On the night in which he was betrayed, as they were sitting at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread, broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, it is broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, this cup is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink this, all of you, to remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labour, and we take this wine. In these, Jesus has promised to be present. Through these, Jesus can make us whole. Let us pray. Heaven is here and earth, and the space is thin between them. Distance may divide, but Christ's promise unites those bounded by time, those blessed by eternity. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Heaven is here and earth, and the God who made them is present. The Lamb is glorious on the throne, sits beside us. The Spirit of God, the Dove, makes her resting place among us. God inhales the breath of our prayers and spreads a table for our satisfaction. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Blessing and honour and glory and power be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Among friends, gathered around the table. Jesus took bread and broke it 
and said, This is my body, broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God, made possible because of my death. Take it, all of you, to remember me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Do this, remembering him. Let us take bread together. This is the blood of Christ, which was shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Let us drink wine together. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew us, and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have always been a soldier. I have served my king and my queen. Now I'm getting I can only dream When I make that final journey I will turn my face to the sea In this world of changes Please remember me Paper and a story on this brave and humble man. There's no one here to mourn him. Can someone lend a hand? And on the day they brought him down to the place where he would lie, there were thousands on the street. To say goodbye And many more would go In the days and months ahead To read these words in stone That said I have always been a soldier I have served my king and my queen Now I'm getting older I can only dream When I make that final journey I will turn my face to the sea In this world of changes Please remember me In this world of changes